Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We begin our worship by confessing our sin together and opening our ears and our hearts to the good news of Christ's forgiveness. Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful Father, although in Christ our light has come, at times we prefer the darkness of sin. We do not let your light shine in our lives, so others may see our good works and glorify you. We are deeply sorry and humbly repent. Forgive us and fill us with your spirit. Give us the joy of your salvation. Send us out to proclaim your saving love to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will to all.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom in the peace of your heart. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit, that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, 
and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite the children to join me up front for children's time. The rest of us will sing. In drops, oceans, lakes, and rivers, welcome, child of God. Father's father's brother's sister. Welcome, children of God. Good morning, and thanks for coming up for the message today. I wanted to talk about fishing this morning. It's actually a topic I kind of like to talk about anyway, but uh, it's in our gospel reading for sure. Um, And there's kind of two ways of going about fishing. One is the way that we're most familiar with. It's with a fishing pole. You've probably been fishing with a fishing pole before. And the way you fish with a fishing pole is you are trying to lure the fish. So you have little things that are actually called lures, Right, And that's a way of uh, getting their attention and uh, trying to say, here, fishy, fishy, come over here, how about? And and, uh, so it'll have something that'll flash or something shiny or something that'll spin and it'll get their attention, right? Or you'll use bait, which I don't know how fish smell underwater, but the smellier the bait, the better, and they'll smell it and then they'll come come to it. You're luring them to you, right? Uh, That's one way to fish. But another way to fish is with a net, and you have to have a special license. Don't try this with your, you're not allowed to. You'll get in big trouble. But, uh, but certain people, like my brother-in-law, he's a commercial fisherman. And so he fishes with nets. And the way you fish with nets is very different. With nets, you go out to where the fish are. Instead of trying to lure them to you, you go out to where they are. And you lower your net right alongside them. You just come like right alongside them. And then you sweep them up out of the deep, out of the dark, and up into the light. And before they know it, they're in the boat. So Jesus, in our gospel reading for today, says, follow me. He, first of all, he goes to these fishermen, right? And they're working with their nets. And he says, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And when he's talking about fishing for people, he's not talking about the first way. There's no lures or bait involved. Instead, these are net fishermen, right? So Jesus is calling his people to fish for people by coming alongside them, going out to them, meeting them where they are, right? Getting close, and before they know it, 
they're swept up from the, out of the darkness into the light, and they're in God's boat. They're part of God's kingdom. That's how all of us are called to fish. That's how all of us are called to live our lives as Christians and, and uh, bring other people into the kingdom. It's by coming alongside them and befriending them and meeting them where they are and loving them. And then we'll have opportunities to witness to Jesus and sweep them up in his love. We do it this way because that's exactly how God has come to us. God didn't dangle anything fancy in front of us, right? God comes to us in Jesus. He's come to us uh, in, in his son, come lot, right alongside us as a human being and loved us and, and met us where we were and brought us into God's kingdom. So that's what we do too. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to us and meeting us where we are, especially when we're in the deep and in the dark. Uh, you come to us and you raise us up. You lift us up to yourself, bringing us into the light, bringing us into the boat. We thank you for your good works uh, that you've done for our, for our sake. And we pray that you, we would hear your call today to go out and welcome others into your kingdom, uh, coming alongside them, meeting them where they are, loving them and showing them your love in the process. We ask it in your name. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What would you need to hear to make you immediately drop everything and respond? For some, it might be the news that there are whales in Penn Cove or out at West Beach. I know people here who, when they hear those words, the next sound that you hear is their car peeling out in the parking lot. That's Martha, by the way. For some, it might be a call from your kid, or from your kid's school, or if you have kids in college like me, even just from your kid's area code. If I get a call from Pullman, Washington, or College Station, Texas, I drop everything in order to answer it. Just hope it's not from the jail. Um, For some, it might be the news that your cows got loose, or that your pregnant wife's water just broke, or that there's a plane leaving for Hawaii with some free seats available. That might get you attention. There are some things we hear that are so compelling, or so urgent, or important, or wonderful, that we're willing to drop everything to respond. In our gospel reading for this morning, we have four fishermen who heard something that made them drop everything and respond. First, we have Simon and Andrew, two fishermen from Galilee. They were at work at their jobs, just doing their jobs, casting their nets into the sea, when Jesus called to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people, he said. And immediately, St. Mark tells us, they left their nets and followed him. Next, we have James and John, two more fishermen. These two were in their boats mending their nets when Jesus called to them. And right there on the spot, they left their father Zebedee and their hired men and followed him, followed Jesus. What was it that compelled these four fishermen to drop everything and respond? Well, Jesus had come up to Galilee with a compelling message. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. These, by the way, are the very first recorded words of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. They constitute Jesus' very first sermon. So, rather than just hearing... What I think of, let's, let's look at Jesus' sermon for today. He's preaching to us today. He's preaching to us every Sunday. But let's break down this very short sermon of Jesus that we hear this morning. First came a wonderful announcement in Jesus' sermon. The time is fulfilled, he said. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean that the time is fulfilled? Well, there are two words in the New Testament that are translated as time in English. One is chronos, which is where we get English words like chronological or chronology. This word refers to linear time, which can be marked and measured. It's 1 o'clock, then it's 2 o'clock, it's January, then it's February. You get the idea. That's, that's chronos time. 
But there's another word for time in the New Testament, and you don't see it unless you dig. Uh, but this word is kairos. Kairos refers not to linear time that we live in. It refers to the proper time or, or the right time. It's a word that's often used to describe God's time. When a baker is baking bread, he or she knows the bread is ready to come out of the oven, not just by the clock. That's helpful to a, de- a degree. But you don't just go by the clock. You go by the doneness, right? People who bake know this. You look at the crust. You kind of thump on the bottom for it to be the right sound. And, and then when it's ready, you say, ah, it's, it's time. What has been waited for and watched for has happened. It's time. That's Kairos. Well, Jesus begins his very first sermon by saying, it's time. The thing that everyone had been waiting for and watching for has happened. The promise that God was coming to save his people was now being fulfilled in him. Next, in Jesus' sermon, he says, the kingdom of God has come near. When Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, he's not talking about a place He isn't talking about a territory or a region or a castle. He isn't talking about an earthly structure of some kind. He's not talking about an organization or a network or an institution. Instead, the kingdom of God is whenever and wherever God makes himself known. It is whenever and wherever God's rule or God's authority is made manifest. Or as one Bible scholar put it, the kingdom of God is whenever and wherever God makes a personal appearance. Which I love that definition. This is what has happened with the appearance of Jesus in Galilee. God has come near. Next in the sermon, Jesus calls for a response. After this proclamation, this amazing announcement, this amazing a proclamation that he makes to the people, Jesus calls for a response from them. Repent, he says, and believe. Repent and believe. Believe in the good news. So what it means to repent. To repent is to turn around. That's literally what the word means, to turn around. It, it means to change direction. To repent is to change your mind and your heart and your behavior and your life. In our first reading, we heard how Jonah reluctantly went to Nineveh to call them to repent. Forty days more and Nineveh will be overthrown, he said. Here was an announcement that, much to Jonah's chagrin, that got them to drop everything and respond. And they responded by changing direction. They repented. Nineveh was a notoriously wicked city. As the capital of the Assyrian Empire, it was one of Israel's most ruthless enemies, which is why Jonah didn't want to go there in the first place. Not so much the danger of going there, but uh, he knew that God was gracious and merciful and didn't want them to have any of that. The prophet Nahum called Nineveh a city of blood and a place of endless cruelty. The Ninevites rejected God and God's ways and God's people. But then Jonah called them to repentance And everything changed. They changed direction. They repented. They proclaimed the fast as a sign of their turn towards the one true God. They even changed clothes with everyone, both great and small, putting on sackcloth as a sign of their changed hearts. And they changed their behavior, too. We hear that they turned from their evil ways. It's a direct quote. All of this is what it means to repent. But there's even more to it than this. You see, there's, there's another way uh, that Israel understood what it means to repent. For the people of Israel, this word had a history of being used to call the people to change their behavior, to be sure, but had another meaning too, a little bit of nuance to the meaning. For the Israelites in exile, it was also understood as an invitation simply to return to God was an invitation to come home, both literally as they came out of exile and spiritually as they turned their hearts once again to God. It's a little bit of a different nuance on it. And I wonder sometimes, what if every time we heard the word repent, 
we heard an invitation to come home. I think that would get people to drop everything and respond. Hmm? Finally, Jesus said, believe in the good news. Jesus' proclamation was not good advice, primarily. It is good news. In him, the time has been fulfilled. In him, the kingdom of God has come near. Believe it, Jesus is saying now. Trust what I am saying to you. Respond to my words with faith. Respond by following me. Believe in the good news. The Ninevites and Simon and Andrew and James and John, they all heard a word from the Lord which compelled them to drop everything and respond. The Ninevites dropped their evil ways. The fishermen dropped their nets, at least for now. They responded immediately following the Lord in faith. And now, brothers and sisters, it is our turn. Today we hear Christ Jesus say to us, the time is fulfilled. So no matter what is going on for you in chronological time, no matter what life is like for you today on January 21st, 2024, no matter what your life was like yesterday or will be like tomorrow, no matter what you might be experiencing in this linear time, our Lord Jesus says, the time is fulfilled. The time is right. The time is right for you to know his presence, his mercy, His grace, his love. That time has come. It is now, right here and right now. Today we hear that the kingdom of God has come near to us. God's kingdom has infiltrated our world. God's presence and power has infiltrated our lives. In the midst of the brokenness of the kingdoms of the earth in which we live, God's kingdom has entered in. Not to claim territory or to build a castle, not to wield earthly power, but simply to make himself known to us. In Jesus, God has made a personal appearance so so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, he might come to rule our hearts with his peace. Today, through this living word, we hear the Lord Jesus call us, to repent as well. We are called to turn away from all wickedness as the people of Nineveh did. We're called to turn from all sin. We're called to change our direction, our minds, our hearts, our behavior, our lives as needed in response to his gracious call. And all who find themselves in exile from God, maybe that's you today, you are graciously invited to come home. Come home to him. Today we are all called once again to believe in the good news. We're called to trust in God's word, in what Christ Jesus has said to us. And this is what he has said to us in his sermon for today. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus' very first sermon continues to be so compelling, so urgent, so important, so wonderful, that we can't help but respond to it immediately with faith, a faith that follows him and invites others to do the same. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us now confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Let us now pray for the church, the world, and for all people in any need. Please join me now in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we pray for your church. As you sent Jonah with a saving word for an unbelieving people, and as you called Simon and Andrew, James and John, to fish for people, So too, call your people anew today to gather others into the boat of your church through repentance and believing in the good news of your dear Son. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the leaders of all nations. Give them integrity, wisdom, humility, and sound judgment. Give us grace to live in concord and unity with one another. And grant us peace. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen and protect those serving in our nation's armed forces, especially those currently deployed. Use their skills to preserve life and liberty. Be with them in their lonely hours and sustain families awaiting the safe return of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, be the rock and refuge of those who are sick, grieving, anxious, or afraid. Help all who are in any need to turn to you, trusting that your love will never fail. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, giver of life, we lift up to you those in our congregation who are celebrating birthdays in the week ahead, including David Myers, Wendy Wilson, Judy Fantasi, Sarah Rodriguez, Georgette Anglum, and Michelle Harper. Bless each of these friends with the joy of your presence as they mark their milestones. Lord, in your mercy. We pray also for Galen and Carter Smith as they celebrate their wedding anniversary today. We give thanks for their obvious joy in one another and for the glimpse they give us all of Christ's love for his bride, the church. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray for our congregation for all whom you have gathered here this day. As we hear your word for us, stir our hearts to respond to it immediately by following you in faith and inviting others to do the same. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
All right, a few announcements to share with you. Uh, first of all, thank you to those who um, attended and participated in our semi-annual meeting this morning. Uh, it just went wonderfully, and I was talking with somebody after the meeting um, who's new to our congregation, and um, this person mentioned that uh, she'd been to a lot of annual meetings in a lot of different congregations and uh, had not seen one go so smoothly and amicably as, uh, as ours, and that's just a, a testament to, um, to good leadership on council. Uh, you trust your council members. You trust your council president. Uh, we do a lot of work kind of behind the scenes to be above board and be transparent, and so everybody kind of knows what we're going to do. Uh, so we work out any issues a- ahead of time, and it makes for a wonderfully smooth meeting. Uh, but semi new meetings are also an opportunity to just be grateful for our volunteers, uh, for your faithful giving, uh, for just so many blessings that we have been given in this congregation. Um, I was talking with one of our former preschool kids, who's still a kid, but uh, is back visiting today. Uh, hasn't been here a long time, though, and he looked up at me and he said, you still work here? And, uh, <laughs> and I said, yes, I do. And um, our semi annual meeting is another opportunity for me to just be so thankful that that's the case. So uh, thank you for your support of me as, as well. But great semi annual meeting, so thanks for everybody, to everybody for that. Uh, Because we had our semi-annual meeting this morning, it kind of throws off the teaching schedule, so we will not have Bible study on Wednesday. We usually repeat the Sunday class on Wednesday. Because we didn't have a Sunday class uh, Wednesday, we will not have a class either. But we will resume that study of the Psalms beginning next Sunday, so um, just know that. Uh, We have on, let's see here, confirmation class. We have confirmation class tonight from 6 to 8. We have some of our confirmation families here, so please be reminded of that. Monday, we have our newsletter deadline for February. If you have anything you want to get in the newsletter for February, please get that to Martha by tomorrow. Tuesday, we have our men's lunch. All uh, men are invited to join us for lunch at noon with Bible study as well. Our ministry of the month for January, as you've been hearing, is His Kids Preschool. We appreciate your special extra offerings to support our preschool and to rebuild their reserve fund, which has been significantly depleted after a couple of crises back-to-back. So um, that helps them to get on some firmer footing. We're getting some good traction, getting enrollment back up again, and things are going in the right direction there. Uh, But part of that is rebuilding that um, reserve fund. So we appreciate your special gifts to that in January. Uh, The three of them aren't here at this service, but they were at 8 o'clock. I wanted to mention them here too, though. Some of you remember from last Sunday, we didn't have any working bathrooms. Uh, we had the flush toilets with buckets and all of that business. And um, we, everything's working now. Uh, we have all the water fixed. Uh, there's still some repair work in the ceiling, the new access holes that we had to cut out and everything. But three people in particular literally saved this congregation from a multi-thousand dollars worth of catastrophe. Um, you heard that the pipes started to burst during a funeral last week. Uh, we were here, and that was discovered quickly and able to be turned off, so that saved a lot of problems. But once they got up in there, they discovered 12 places where it had broken, the pipes had broken. And if that had run for hours and hours, like it would have on a normal Saturday, um, it would have been catastrophic on that side of the church. Preschool probably wouldn't be able to open. Um, it would have been terrible. So they spent hours and hours all weekend long um, fixing it all so that we would have both hot and cold water and working toilets uh, today. Those three people, just so you know, and you can thank them later when you see them uh, coming and going, Paul Sennis, our council president, was here a lot this last couple of days. Uh, Steve Ellis was here a lot helping out, and especially Dave Fosno, who was in that crawl space on his belly, back and forth all over the place, getting those things repaired. He'd find one, think it was done, start the water again, oh, there's another one, until they got to number 12, and finally it was all under control. Uh, but we did show our thanks to them for saving us all of those thousands and thousands of dollars it would have cost to fix it. Um, with, the least we could do was to give them some gift cards. So we gave the, each of them gift cards to El Cazador uh, for $50 each. And I told them the only caveat is that you can't spend it all on margaritas. You have to... Uh, <clears throat> after all of that work, that's probably what their temptation was. But uh, yes... <laughs> Our worship continues now with the offering.
Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful Father, the Magi brought gifts to your Son, the Babe of Bethlehem. Graciously accept our gifts given to glorify and worship Christ, our Savior, and to bring healing and hope to the people he came to redeem. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes Dear friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Come, for all is ready. Please be seated.
Croatia. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your dear Son, given to us this holy sacrament. Strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our light and our life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom. I missed my cue, so now you get two blessings in a row. <laughs> and now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace this day and always. Amen. And now may God the Father Almighty bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.